Now that we have the trigger guard, we, it's time now to start shaping the outside. We need to finish up the layout. Now, in the process of doing all this, I seem, for some reason, I didn't put my center line or I erased it. Uh, well, okay, so I have to recreate it. It's not that difficult. Um, there's a couple of references we can use. The first one, here in the middle, it's 0.72, so I go to 36, quickly put a line here, and let's see what it's got here. And I'm just temporarily going to use this. Uh, 124, that puts it at 36. Wait a minute, that's 62. And this is just to double check to make sure my pinholes are in the right place. Alright, now, lay my tape out. And see how it all lines up? It does. And yes, it's going to seem a little strange. It may be a little uh, kind of slap happy the way some of this gets laid out, but there's no sense in getting uh, you know, down to thousandths of an inch. In the long run, it won't make any difference. So here's my center line. And let me get a stock here to show you. Okay, we do want some offset. Remember what I was talking about with offset. If you go down the bore, it's going to end up, the center line will be over here. So we want to move the butt plate this way, on that side. Now I've already figured out my length quite a while ago when we were trying to figure out where the trigger went and uh, where the receiver and all that kind of stuff. That line, thankfully, I left. So, let me take the bore, okay, and here's the butt plate I was using. It's a little oversized, but uh, that's not such a bad thing, and it centers about here. All I'm doing at the moment is just checking. And uh, where to put the line? There it is. So let's see how far I am. Okay, according to this tape measure, I'm seven eighths of an inch. That's a little far. You don't want more than, say, half inch, uh, five eighths, perhaps at the outside. Yes, you can go further, but the thing is, you'll have uh, so much leverage that when it fires, it's going to really twist you and become very uncomfortable. So here's a half inch, or well, excuse me, that's three quarters.
Well, here's where uh, that thing I'm so used to doing it without thinking. I need to back up and it dawned on me as I was uh, laying this out, I forgot to explain a few things. So, let me go back. Uh, first, you know, we set up a quarter of an inch or three-eighths of an inch of wood over here. And I want to do the same thing on this side. So, if I measure it, it's pretty much a quarter of an inch. So, let's do the same thing with the other side. And, once again, I've set my pencil down. Well, good thing it wasn't a snake, huh? And I also went back and planed this just a little bit so you have some white wood and can hopefully see black marks or black pencil line. Alright, a quarter of an inch. Okay, now you're going to see part of the reason why. I use an old tape ruler. In just a moment, let me draw this out first. <coughs> and you can take this and just squish it and it's going to draw a straight line if I have the rest of this straight. <clears throat> because a cheek piece is going to be on this side and it's going to occupy just about all the wood, I'm not going to cut anything here or any more along the side. This I'll do all with a chisel. So now we line this up. <clears throat> and work our way down, whoops, side here. And this is the part I now cut out with the saw and also the back here. Okay, well I've now got done sawing it out and uh, well I'm glad I'm documenting this because I'm not going to believe it uh, myself but of course bandsaw blade just broke. I, when I turned it on it snapped which I guess is better than the thing breaking in the middle. So I had to use my table saw. So I had to use two cuts, top and bottom, and you can see the line through the middle. So I took a Japanese saw and just sawed the, this little triangle that was in the middle. That was one thickness. Then I reset it for the other one and uh, cut it off here. Got that one, and then of course that left this center one with two different thicknesses, and I saw it through that. So now I have some scraps, and this is what I'm left with. So now what I'm going to do is clean this off and get this closer to the line, and I'll do that pretty much with a plane. So I'll be back shortly. Now it is time to come up with the shape of this back part of the stock. We already have the width, uh, have a rough idea of what all this is about. So now we need to start finalizing this part so it starts looking like a proper gun stock. Now I guess um, yesterday afternoon a friend of mine approached me and mentioned something up about a 260 AI. It's a Remington. Tends to be a very long range cartridge. I uh, think I'm going to take them up on it because it comes with a reamer and barrels and some dies and things like that. 
if I would build two of them. Can't turn down a deal like that. So what I'm going to end up doing, and let me make, before I get too much further, I'm going to, to make sure this is uh, done conventionally. Then I'll make the adaptions that I'm going to talk about in just a moment. I don't want to confuse things or get you confused. Um, I'll show you how to do it conventional, and then we're going to do a little bit of modification. Now, just what are those modifications? Well, this is one of them. This is a, an adjustable butt plate. Quite often the high power shooters with precisions uh, use these things. And this, of course, allows you to go in and out, rotate it, slide it up and down. And uh, the way this post is made, you can go back and forth. That's going to go here. Now, they do make several different versions. Um, this one, since I can change this, it makes it this really thick, I don't know, it, it's kind of butt ugly. It's just, I mean, my God, that's a lot of aluminum um, to work around. Um, don't. I don't know if it could be made thinner. I sure wish it could. We'll just have to see. But I'm going to do it with a conventional butt plate so you can see it. And then I'm going to be adding this at the very end. Along with this, of course, is going to be a comb. Now, from time to time, this is certainly going to be used for hunting. And a lot of the time, it's going to spend on a bench. Uh, so there's going to be some big changes in uh, the way all this stuff lines up. If it's on a bench, of course, it's going to be uh, shoved out quite a bit. I don't exactly like bouncing a scope off my skull. Uh, it it kind of tends to ruin your day, So, uh, and I do creep up on it. You might be one of those that does the same thing, so of course this will be stuck back just a little bit. They also make a kit <coughs> called an adjust adjustable comb. These tend to be more on shotguns than on rifles. But it comes with all these neat doodads and these two barrels. What this does is it allows you, you put it on the top, it allows you to slide it up and down. And then the way you can see these screws are in here, you can adjust it, slide it up and down, and you have a little bit of wiggle room around. So you can get it to fit whatever, can, whatever you're trying to do. But, I'm going to set these aside for the time being. <clears throat> and like I say, we'll start off with just the conventional. Well, how do we do the conventional? Let's have a look here. And I'm sure you recognize this the same stock. Remember to line up these back holes. That will put it about here. Something like this. I can draw the lines. This will be uh, fairly accurate. If uh, you notice when you had this and the scope on it, when you put it to your shoulder, uh, you, well, I'm not quite sure where the scope's going to end up being, and some more details like that. So what we're going to do is leave some extra material, get this roughly uh, roughed out, then we're going to put a scope on the barrel, put all this in, and you're going to go back and forth and adjust it little by little to get the comb correct. Now, I'm leaving that a little vague. I'll cover those details when I get to it. So, what we're going to do is just take the, the, the stock, and remember, we're going to be off just a little bit. Hold it straight up and down, and if you want to, you can can it to the inside, give yourself a little extra room. Remember, it's a whole lot easier to cut material off than it is to add it. And as you can hear, everybody should have their own herd of elephants. Sam must be in a happy mood. Okay, and this will make my 
pistol grip. So, I might even bring this out a little bit more, but now it's time to take it to the bandsaw and, well, this I don't know how much I'll cut out, but I can certainly cut around here. And just a piece of advice, if this is the top of the comb, and yes, you will be cutting it down here. Do yourself a favor, come in here, and cut this straight. This is actually cosmetic, and sometimes it looks good with a long comb, sometimes with a, saw, uh, uh, a short comb. And those details, I'll cover in just a moment. Now, what do I mean by these different combs? Got a couple examples. This is a Monte Carlo, and it sticks up and also has a, a rollover, a comb over. And no, it has nothing to do with Donald Trump. It just curls over the top. This rifle doesn't have that. It's straight across the top. So according to what kind you like, take that into consideration. And if this was one of the, the curl overs, all I would have done is take this up and drop this down a little bit. But this line up here would have been the same, and I would have carried this down just a little bit more and brought it up to emphasize the comb that's sitting up here. It's not, it's supposed to be put in, it's um, actually blended into the stock, so we have more straight lines. It's just in whatever kind of flavor um, strikes your fancy. So, let me cut this down, and what we're going to do then is also start working on the uh, place of the butt plate. We put the butt plate on. people seem to get somewhat concerned is how do I get all these rounded shapes well it comes with what every single one of the butt plates you put the butt plate on it and right here you start rounding this off you pretty much try to draw straight lines and keep it, uh, it with these same curves as you're going up and then we'll slowly blend everything together but you'll find out a lot of what you're going to do is block it out and then refine it, block it, refine it, block it, and it's just uh, repeating itself. And don't hesitate, don't put in long hours. Uh, this is where you want to take lots of breaks. Your eyes get accustomed to what you're looking at. What you, every time you take a break, your memory somewhat fades, and when you come back, you'll see it in new lights. And what you see may give you more ideas, or you'll see it headed in some direction that really doesn't strike your fancy. Uh, you're not going to be able to do that if you sit down here and go eight hours straight, non-stop. So uh, do yourself a uh, favor and take lots of breaks. So let me cut this up and see what we end up with.